Hey, what's up everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. So as you guys know, LeBron James and these guys have been making major, major waves uh, in the sports world. They just, um, what is it? Mind the game. I'm trying to come up, pull up the podcast. Mind the game pod. Yeah, so he recently launched a podcast with uh, JJ Reddick um, two days ago, and the full uh, episode has two million views, which comes as no surprise, um, given the given the fact that JJ Reddick already had traction on YouTube and LeBron is who he is. Um, they have two hundred and sixty four thousand subscribers. I just want to see how many views they've been able to pick up since the debut show. Okay, and they're two million views right now. So. The sub count you're looking at just based off of the sheer popularity of J.J. Redick and most importantly, uh, LeBron James. And as a podcast, it's essentially centered on um, getting into the X's and O's of basketball and really breaking it down to the intricate uh, level. So that's what it's on there. Uh, that's what it's about. A lot of people are excited about it. Others are kind of on the fence about it, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now, as you guys know, one of the biggest voices, voices in sports media is Stephen A. Smith. Um, and he generally speaks on things like this. He, sp he spoke on the Pat McAfee situation. He spoke on the Joe Rogan's on Joe Rogan's new contract uh, renewal with Spotify. I believe is two hundred million dollars up and up. So Stephen A. Smith followed the follows, excuse me, uh, these things, these things. So what happened? Came across a clip of him on his show, the Stephen A. Smith show, where he was reacting to this news of this new podcast. So as he was going through it and talking about why it was great, he then brought up a particular angle that I had not really considered, if I'm being totally honest with you. And essentially what Stephen A. Smith was saying was that he believes that LeBron decided to partner up with J.J. Redick for a strategic reason that it seems like no one is really discussing, at least to, to, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, so what we want to do is want to play exactly what Stephen A. Smith had to say here about why he believes LeBron really decided to do a show with J.J. Redick, and I want to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to Stephen A. Smith uh, right here. First of all, major props and congratulations to LeBron James. I'm dead serious about this. Because if you remember, I'm not going to be hypocritical here. There's a thousand times I've talked about the genius and the brilliance of these basketball players. It's a LeBron James one day. It's a Kevin Durant another day. It's a Steph Curry another day. It's a Chris Paul another day. It's a James Harden another day. The list goes on and on. The NBA is rife with brilliant, brilliant basketball minds. And their problem is they're so damn sensitive most of the time. And they're so dismissive and aloof because they're not talking to somebody they consider on their level. They don't want to talk about it as opposed to taking an opportunity to actually teach the game. Now LeBron has put his words, his bravado, his stature, his money, figuratively speaking, where his mouth is. He is showing you right there elements of the game that the average basketball fan can't possibly think about or see because we're fixated on a finished product as opposed to the nuances surrounding the game, what goes into it, and what ultimately leads to success. But having said all of that, let me be the first to say LeBron James was a little bit slick here too. Brilliantly slick, I might add, because he could have had that conversation on uninterrupted. He could have been talking to Maverick Carter. He could have been talking to Rich Paul. He could have been talking to his crew of boys. But he chose to do this with J.J. Redick. Who is J.J. Redick? One of the great shooters in the history of the game who had a 15-year-plus career in the NBA, who is now a color commentator, a part of the A-team with Mike Breen and Doris Burke on ABC and ESPN games, who's also a contributor to my daytime job, First Take, along with other shows, not to mention the fact he's got his own podcast, The Old Man and the Three, which is very popular. So what happens is when you get with somebody like a JJ who knows the game, who's a brilliant basketball mind, but can be a bit truculent or acerbic at times when somebody he believes is ignorant is in his face talking about the game, to have a voice like that serves LeBron in a multitude of ways because it provides him cover from the regular discourse that would serve to criticize or sully his name in any way because he don't want to do it. He believes that's beneath him. So he got with somebody 
that'll do it for him. Not to say that's what J.J. signed on for. Not to say that's what J.J. is about. I'm just saying that J.J. knows the game. And he is quick to check anybody who thinks they know stuff they don't know about the game of basketball. It's a brilliant move on LeBron James' part. Very slick. And it will work like heaven against everybody except me. It won't work. When you go out on that wing and you jacking up shots you don't need to jack up or you're hesitant about getting to the free throw line or you're choosing to shoot a, shoot a fall away jump shot instead of taking it to the hole and being that man amongst boys that you are, J.J. ain't going to be able to help you there, no matter what he says. But it is a brilliant idea, and everybody should want to watch J.J. Redick with LeBron James. So you heard what Stephen A. Smith had to say about why he believes that J.J. did that, uh, LeBron did that. So essentially, he's saying that LeBron did it from a strategic standpoint to have someone in the media uh, to basically cover his behind and argue on his behalf. Now, is there truth to this? Well, 100% there is truth to this. Why is there truth to this? Uh, because we already know people in media that are already essentially put there to do that. I'll give you some examples. Nick Wright, uh, Shannon Sharp um some others that i can't think of some people say but how do you say nick wright well doug gobley on fox sports radio revealed that nick wright is a clutch sports represented by clutch sports i don't think i need to say anything else beyond that um and you have others out there to do that so it's not something that oh my god i can i can't really picture that really could that happen of course it could happen right so we have that and we have examples of this that already uh uh exist um, in terms of J.J. Reddick coming to the defense of LeBron, listen, ah, by the way, so he mentioned that point. There's another point. Um, Draymond Green recently came out there and was basically complaining about how he wasn't able to get LeBron on his show. Um, but instead, he uh, LeBron decided to partner up with J.J. Reddick, but he's been on uninterrupted, the, 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 the shop or whatever it is. So Draymond was like, he feels a type of way about it, blah, 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 blah. Let me give you guys the reason why I believe LeBron chose uh, J.J. Redick over a Draymond Green. To me, it's a no-brainer if I'm LeBron. One, number one, J.J. Redick is on a big platform every single day on ESPN. So you have someone that's going to be able to speak on your behalf to the masses on a daily basis. And of course, he covers NBA games. So that's the first thing. Draymond is not there. He's an athlete who has a podcast. That's number one. Number two, uh, J.J. Redick is more articulate than Draymond Green when it in terms of expressing his ideas that's the bloody fact of the matter and if I had someone arguing on my behalf if I had to choose between a lawyer one that could argue properly and make sound arguments in court versus another one who may know the information but can't really put on a good case for me then I'm obviously I'm going to go with the other one so there's a no-brainer that I don't think there should be any emotional component of it uh I think that if Draymond Green looks at the situation dispassionately he'll be able to come to that conclusion rather quickly Anybody else looking at the situation should be able to figure this out rather quickly. Uh, J.J. Redick is better at expressing his views than Draymond Green. Simple, period, end of story. Now, if you feel any type of way about it, that's up to you, right? I mean, there's nothing really to be offended about, right? It's just something that I think all of us have, what is it, certain deficiencies in our, some of us have certain deficiencies in our, in our arsenal, right? Um, and certain things you got to work on. For, for example, for me, I wasn't always as articulate as I am today. How did I work on that? I had to read a lot of books, period. Like, I haven't read all the books in the world. I haven't read, I don't know, a hundred books. No, I haven't read that many books. I'm not going to sit up here and lie, and lie to you guys. I've read about 40, 40 books, 40 to 50 books, right? And I've read books and books help enhance uh, your vocabulary and the way you the way you put words together and then also listen to great speakers and how they speak. You learn how to do it. You, you learn how to do it. So um, to me, it's a no brainer uh, that, Le that Le LeBron would go with him uh, in terms of, you know, Stephen A. Smith saying it's not going to be able to work with him. I agree with that to a certain extent, because on ESPN first take and on other platforms, he does push back on LeBron when he, LeBron goes out there and says that, but it says some of the stuff that he says, but I want to be fair. It's not just Stephen A. Smith that does it. I've heard Kendrick Perkins do it. Now, obviously there are going to be some people that have issues with this. Oh, why can't you just let the man live? Why can't you just let him live? And I'm like, who's stopping him from living? Somebody came on the channel yesterday. Was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? And of course, when all fails and I want to take the racial route, what kills me is having black guys be the one to play the race card on another black guy. I'm like, bro, do you even understand how the race card works? 
that's one thing another guy said allow the man to have it uh, to, to, to have his opinion and i'm like why, why why is it always when i'm arguing with these lebron guys they, they can't reason properly allow him to argue his opinion who, uh, to state his opinion who stopped him isn't there freedom of speech yes and he exercised it did anybody run up on lebron james and throw cello tape over his mouth and stop him from talking these people i don't know where like what what is going on with you with your dudes allow the man to have his opinion he had his opinion he stated his opinion but you then don't want other people to have uh, 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 opinions that are diametrically opposed to his. And if they are those opinions that exist, there are those opinions that exist. You would then say, oh, well, you're hating. No, you just want there to be one message. And if someone else comes out there and gives or pushes back on that message, oh, well, you are allowed a black man to speak. I'm like, and then they, then they, they, of course, they go to the black man thing to see another black man go after a black sit your ass down with that black man, black man bullshit. Like, sit your ass down with that. No, it's not working. It's not working. The same, oh, turn on a black man. So when we hyping up Kobe, when we hyping up Kawhi, when we hyping up Michael Jordan, they not black. Like, cut it out with this. Sh we got to stop. Like, you guys are trying to play the race card. And a lot of you guys that play this race card, you guys are devaluing. Because when there's a moment to actually mention race, you guys would have used it so much on every stupid example that when it comes time to actually use it properly, People won't take you seriously because they'll say you use everything for race. It's the problem. Every small thing. Whenever your titties, whenever you, you get butt hurt, all of a sudden you want to pull. Well, you know, you turn a black man. Man, sit, sit, sit your ass down. If that's the case and you were so concerned about the black men, why you ain't ask LeBron to go do uh, do his podcast with a black guy? Oh, well, you ain't going to say nothing about that, are you? And I don't personally care if he done a, did a podcast with a white guy, blue guy. I don't care, really. I don't, it's not, these are not thoughts that enter into my daily uh, thinking. Oh, well, you know, you, I don't care, to be quite honest. I don't care to that level. But if that's the angle you guys want to take, then take it all away. Of course you won't take it all away. If you're a black man, if you want to hold down a, shut your ass up with that. I'm a black, I'm black too. What are you talking about? Oh, you're blacker than me somehow? I'm trying to figure it out. I, uh, help me figure it out. You have more, you experience more racism than me because of what? You're blacker? Man, stop. Let me get into this topic here. So as you guys know, there's been this ridiculous movement <clears throat> uh, that has been taking place in the sports media landscape for probably for the past two or three weeks now, which is this dumbass we done with the 90s, right? For whatever reason, somebody somewhere saw fit to say, hey, you know what, man? We're going to start a movement called Done With The 90s. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull up low lights. <clears throat> Michael Jordan and other players kind of you know having blunders on the basketball court and then we're going to use that as a i don't know a, a freaking launching pad to now say oh look you see the era that jordan played in those guys couldn't really play basketball look at how they're bouncing the basketball up and down like that i mean look at how the guys dribble the ball today there's so much more skill yeah when you're allowed to carry yeah when you're allowed to, when you are when you are allowed to carry the basketball you look like a goddamn magician out there but when you actually have to play within the rules and you're not allowed to travel and carry and, and carry the ball, then all of a sudden your game looks totally uh, different. We even put up a poll yesterday <clears throat> asking our audience the following question. Which era had the best music, movies, and sports? And out of the 8,900 people that have voted, 66% uh, of the... Oh, so we had various um, uh, er uh, eras or whatever, decades. So we had the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, 2010s, 2020s. So the 80s got about 18% of the vote. The 90s got 66, which is no surprise. Uh, the 2000s got 13%. The 2010s got, uh, what is it, 2%. And the two, the 2020s got 1%. Now, <clears throat> if you really break it down, I think, obviously, every era had its own kind of thing. The 2000s, the 2010s were pretty good. But the 90s, man, when it comes to music, when it comes to sports, when it comes to movies, man, the 90s, it just has this ever, like, even when, even when we're talking about hip hop, the golden era is the 90s. When we're talking about basketball, the golden, the golden era uh, is the 90s. When you think about the movies that came out in the 90s, Goodfellas, Lion King, all, I mean, there's so many great artists that were out, Tupac, Biggie, Nas, uh, Busta Rhymes, Jay-Z, like, Outkast, TLC, that's just music, and it's a never-ending list. If you think about the movies, uh, you know, independent, it, it goes on and on and on. And there were a lot of iconic, iconic moments 
uh, within that decade. And a lot of people still hold that decade in high regard, as well as the 80s as well. Um, the 2000s also had its moments. The 2010s had its moments. But the vast majority of people believe that the 90s was actually something uh, spectacular if we just go back in history. So what happened yesterday? <clears throat> I was watching a segment on ESPN First Take and they were talking about the Boston Celtics and Lynn Jalen Brown and all of that. And it was Stephen A. Smith, Chris Mad Dog Russo, and J.J. Reddick, who's a huge uh, 90s hater. So as they were talking, Chris Mad Dog Russo brought up something about contracts. And then J.J. Reddick just stood up and he was like, man, well, you know, we're not in the 90s anymore. Chris, like, stop it. This isn't the 90s. And I'm like, yo, bro, what is up with this dude? And like poo-pooing on the era that came before him so before for those of you who actually didn't hear that uh, we want to play what they had to say here and then we'll come back and react to what they had to say take a listen to this sound bite here here's the thing about tatum okay if you look at the top 10 players in the league right now and i was doing this the other day top 10 in the league where would you put tatum about eight seven top so, 10 so one of the top 10 players in the game well he is one of the top 10 but what number would he be I got to think about it, but it certainly wouldn't be as low as eight. My oh, I guess. yes, it would. I don't think so. Well, let's go through them. Okay, let's do it. Jokic. I love doing this exercise. It's fun. I love we it. We did it last year with Jalen Brown. You okay. got to like 23. Oh, I'm down on him. Yeah, I know. I'm not down, down on him. him. He's not as good as Jokic. We would agree with that, correct? Okay. He's not as good as LeBron. We would agree with that. At this point? At yeah, this you got point? Even now. All right. Uh, you're in a big game. Well, on a big series, you're taking LeBron and you're taking big series. Well, well, listen. I'm not talking about 82 games. I'm talking about a big series. Well, I'm talking 82 Your life games. on the line. I'm talking 82 games because that does matter. That does matter. You get reputation in the postseason. You're taking LeBron James. Postseason. Game seven series, a seventh game, a seven game series right now. My life is on the line. Would I rather have LeBron or Tatum? I'm taking LeBron. I'll go with LeBron because of experience. Okay. I, can't, I can't dismiss that, but I, I, I love Tatum's chances. I think you're dismissing him. All right. In a seven-game series, you're taking Leonard or you're taking him? Leonard's healthy. Kawhi Leonard. That's well, yeah, uh, hey, You can't say that if Leonard's healthy when he never is. Durant or Durant or him? Durant. Don't even, don't even hesitate. JJ? That's four. I gave you four right off the bat without even thinking, without even giving it too much thought. Right. Embiid or Tatum? I'm going with Embiid. That's fine. Question. Okay. So I haven't even thought about this. Curry or Tatum? Yeah. Six. So before you even dig into it, he's no better than the seven. But this isn't okay. easy. These aren't okay. easy. It's not. I these aren't. But, no oh, yes, they are. They're but not also, no brainers. Oh. But but what? Is, I have a question then. If you're <laughs> saying that he's not a top five player, he's not top five. Not a, is he better than Giannis? He's not better than Then Giannis. why is he being criticized like a top five player? Oh, that's a fair argument. That's fair. Because he's getting the money. That's fair. That's a fair point, though. No, it's not about the money. It's not about not, the not money. Jaylen, it's not stop about the it, money. bad dog. No. This money isn't the 1990s, respect. buddy. All right. Jalen Brown stop is with getting that. Jalen Brown, the second best player, is getting $304 million. So you heard what J.J. Redick had to say. Listen, here's my just my knee-jerk reaction to what he had to say and what I felt uh, yesterday when I saw it. First of all, listen, um... There's something that really confounds me about NBA players today talking about errors of the past. I don't really understand it. Uh, it's really, really weird. And I and I notice it more in basketball than any other sport, um, probably even, even in any other music genre. Because even if you think about hip hop, they pay a lot of homage and respect uh, to errors in the past and artists in the past like the Biggies, the Jay-Zs, the Nas. You know, the Kiaris ones, the Rock Kims. You you rarely hear a, a hip hop artist go out there and be like, yo, them dudes was trash. You would never, ever, ever hear something like that happen. You wouldn't, right? But for whatever reason in the NBA, it's become fashionable <clears throat> to take digs at the 90s. Now, here's what kills me. Th th this is what kills me. <laughs> if you're an NBA player talking basketball, right? And you find yourself making negative comments, cracking jokes about eras like the 80s and the 90s. I think you need to really sit down and understand what those eras actually did for you. Here are the facts of the matter. Had those eras not existed, had those players uh, not done what they did in the past, no one would care to listen to you talk about basketball nobody at one point the nba was just an up-and-coming sport 
was a fringe sport. So what did the Magic Johnsons, what did the Larry Burrs and these guys do? They really popu popularized this product. At one point, the NBA was on tape delay. So a game would happen. You'd have to go out later and go wait for, the, wait for them to air it to find out the result. That's where the NBA is coming from. <clears throat> so you have what Magic Johnson, you have what Larry Bird and these guys did for the league. Of course, you had the Dr. J's and others. And then you have the Jordans. And the Jordans are these guys that really brought in the money, the branding, and really took basketball to a global level. <clears throat> they took it to a global level. Right. Where now people are interested about this, are interested in the sport globally. And you have players that looked up to some of the iconic players, the Kobe's, the Jordans, all of these guys, and then saw them and then got inspired and wanted to play basketball. Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo, all of these guys were influenced by Kobe and others. And then they come into this current NBA, but they're influenced by what those of them did in the past. So to find yourself as an NBA player talking down on the era that came before you. It really shows a lot of short sighted, short sighted uh, ness in the way you view things. It's you have a very limited world view on how things really work. And somehow you believe that you're the reason that things are happening today. So if I talk sports and I'm saying this and I'm seeing success from it is because of what I'm doing and not because of the foundation that was laid before you. You're lost. You're lost. And it's a it's it's a shame because had Jordan and these guys not did what they did for basketball, why would I sit down and listen to role players and all stars that made an all star team one, two, three times talk about basketball? Why would I care? It's the best players that push the game forward that made people like us interested to listen to a role player talk about basketball. That's essentially what happened. So to look down on that particular era of this game you come off as a real bozo and it really speaks to a person's upbringing <clears throat> it shows that these people really don't have respect it shows that these people really don't understand anything about legacy and to them legacy only goes as far as what they can do to accumulate wealth for their personal families but they don't really understand the legacy of a sport they don't really understand about keeping a heritage vibrant a lot of these guys are ruining what basketball used to mean just by the way that they talk about it. Because if the 80s and the 90s were trash, then how come the NBA is where it is today where so many people around the world are interested in it? Those guys must have done something right. Or am I wrong? Or are you telling me is what guys did today that brought it to the current uh, level that it is? It's a real shame. But what can you expect? What can you expect, man? I mean, it's it's, uh, you know, JJ has been called out on numerous occasions by the legend, the Jerry West, the Bob Cousy's, the 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 um, um, Michael Cooper's and so many others. I, I don't take people like JJ seriously because he doesn't respect the people that paved the way for his own sport. I cannot take you seriously as a man. I can't. It would almost be tantamount to you talking, going up there and cussing out. A 80 year old man on the street because you have a disagreement you're a bozo straight up and down straight up and down you tell me i wouldn't talk to my grandfather that way but i'll definitely talk to somebody's grandfather you're an idiot you're an idiot if you have respect within you it's within you regardless you're not gonna see me loud talking with a 60 year old man somebody old enough to be my dad who raised you where you where you knew come from so anyway, man, this this just the new era. Disrespectfulness and all of that stuff is supposed to be the end thing. You dudes are straight up clowns. I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. They raised me with respect. You got to respect your elders where I grew up at. I don't know where you new come from. And I don't want to be from where you knew where you new dudes be coming from. I'm sorry. Y'all on some weirdo level type of time right now. You you're actually talking down the error that made it possible for your stinking ass to go out there and earn millions of dollars but you have the goal to sit up there and talk down on them at one point calling them plumbers you're a super bozo a super bozo the nba helped make you a multi-millionaire my guy what else would you have been doing that have been paying you this type of money let's be for real a lot of these dudes would be running around broke as hell if they weren't in the nba 
So for you to be running around and talking about these guys that built the league for you, you're a jackass. And I can never get with somebody like that. I cannot get with clown ass people on the internet down talking the 90s, but then want to sit up here and talk about basketball today. What are you talking about? If it wasn't for those dudes, there would be no NBA. So what are you, what are you, what are y'all trying to accomplish here? Y'all are straight up, y'all are y'all are straight up clowns, straight up and down. That's just what needs to be said. A lot of you dudes are bozos. And a lot of you dudes don't have any principles or morals or a raise of respect. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In the African tradition, which I'm from and I'm proud of, you're raised with respect. You can't just be running up and talking crazy to people, regardless of your money. It's not by your money, it's by your seniority and what position you play in a community. They don't view it by, oh, just how much money you spent. There's a certain thing as hierarchy and respect. So I don't, uh, y'all be talking all these, oh, I don't be, y'all, y'all be looking like straight up. I'm just keeping it funky. Ain't nobody out there saying that like how I'm giving it, how I'm giving it up right now. Ain't nobody. That's why I cannot respect people. Like, I'm sorry. I cannot. And I refuse to. Because the way you are and the way you conduct yourself as a man and how you treat people that came before you means more to me than how much you know about basketball. We're talking about a character thing here. This goes beyond sports. We're talking about your character. And you are straight up and down weirdo if you're one of these people running around insulting people older than you. I'm sorry. It is what it is.